Hi, I'm Katherine Vaughn, and this is Teaching STEM Outside. All things that you need to start a STEM program that takes place beyond the four walls of your classroom. I'm going to share my screen and share my presentation with you all today. Thank you for being here. This is so exciting. <laughs> all right, here we go. So teaching STEM outdoors. Why teach STEM outside and how to get started? This presentation is for people that are interested in teaching outdoors. It's for teachers that are looking to start a program or want some ideas about what to teach outside. It's for administrators that would like to perhaps start a program or enhance a program already existing in their school. It's for district supervisors who would like to start one of these programs as well. Homeschool families, if you're interested in taking the kids outside to learn more, if you're not already doing so. And basically anyone that wants to learn more about how to start a STEM program outdoors and what you need to get going. Uh, over here, you can see some photos. I love teaching outdoors. And um, it's just a collection of some of the things that we've done over the last decade. Hi, I'm Katherine Vaughn. I am a rural West Tennessee elementary art and STEM teacher from Tipton County. I'm a graduate of the University of Memphis, and I received my master's at the College of St. Rose in Albany, New York. I started teaching third grade in 2006 and transitioned to elementary art in 2009. I started the outdoor STEM after school program back in 2010, and I think I've received something like over 400 hours of STEM PD over the last decade. I've taught thousands of classes outside in several schools all around my community and county. I love to be outdoors as much as possible. It's a true passion. Uh, I'll show you some pictures. I kind of fancy myself an outdoors woman, even though I um, grew up in New York. <laughs> uh, I'm a certified scuba diver. I love horseback riding and um, canoeing and kayaking and learning all things outdoors. Our goals today are to look at how teaching STEM outside can benefit both the teacher, the school, and the student, to explore where to teach, who to teach outdoors, and what an outdoor classroom looks like. Outdoor classrooms are everywhere in the last couple of years, and I want to show you some things that we have done. We're also going to discuss what types of STEM lessons are best taught outside and to who and learn how to start and fund your program. Funding is very important as any of us in education well know. Uh, in that photo, you see some of my students, uh, it looks like we're tackling a tree and <laughs> having an amazing time. Um, here we are outside. We're so lucky to have such beautiful weather in this part of Tennessee. Why teach STEM outside? Well huge surge in teaching outside, mostly because of the pandemic. As we found out, air quality is a thing. And for a lot of us, it seems safer and safer to be outside and teach our students outside. I love being out there and I'm very concerned about safety. I was expecting my first child during most of the pandemic. So I wanted to be outside as much as possible with my students. Teaching outside has many benefits. Um, there you see a picture of my girls looking like they can conquer the world. <laughs> it's just beautiful. <laughs> it's one thing I love about teaching outside. So learning outdoors is healthy. Um, outdoors is the active, increases students' physical and mental and social health. Taking kids outside all the time, we're exercising, we're walking, we're learning how to work together in groups, we're exploring together and watching them really blossom and take advantage of this wonderful land that we have surrounding our school. Some studies have even shown that physical activities increase with outdoor learning. I know that for a fact, um, my step counter on my watch goes crazy when I take the kids out. I think I clock something like 17,000 steps a day. Outdoor learning and access to nature also decreases stress levels of students and teachers. The last two years in education have been incredibly stressful for both students and educators and administrators. 
So getting outside and reconnecting with nature and um, learning in an environment like that is so less stressful than being inside a classroom or being at home in front of a computer. Taking kids and students back to nature has been really amazing these last two years. Here we are. <laughs> We're lucky that we have such expansive grounds surrounding my school, but that's not necessary for starting an outdoor program. So teaching outdoors can be incredibly fun and fulfilling. Um, often the outdoors provides a change of pace from the classroom, which students and teachers both enjoy. Studies have shown that increased student enthusiasm for learning happens when classes are outdoors. My students and myself both love being outside. It has increased our attendance in our school for days when I am teaching outdoor lessons. Uh, this was last week uh, while we were TCAP testing in the morning, we were taking classes outside in the afternoon. I made sure to do that every year during our TCAP week to help with attendance. If students know they're going to go outside and explore, they are going to come to school. You can tell they just, they love it. <laughs> this is during one of our water education days. Learning outdoors increases academic performance. A number of studies have documented increased school performance through outdoor education. Research has documented increased standardized test scores, which I know is important to all of us in education, enhanced attitude about school. That's incredibly important now as well um, with our students' mental health. We want them to love being here. We want them to appreciate their school and this helps. Improved in-school behavior. My students will behave if they know they can go outside later. <laughs> Improved attendance and overall enthusement and, and overall um, academic achievement when students learn in and about nature. Our students want to be outside. In addition, outdoor education effectively employs a greater range of children's own intelligences. We all learned about Gardner in school, and different students learn different ways. They show their intelligence in different ways. And going outside is a great way for those students to get in touch with those intelligences. Many researchers contribute the increase in performance to increase relevance and hand-on learning experience of learning outdoors. And that's where STEM and STEM projects can really come in because as you know, if you've done project-based learning in your school, if you have a STEM curriculum, so much of it is hands-on. And that's what I really feel this generation of kids need. I love this picture. This little girl had never seen herself as a scientist before. And we were having a water education day and she was taking water samples and testing them for their pH. And she realized all of a sudden that she loved science and thought, hey, maybe I could be a scientist someday. So allowing our students to visualize themselves and to see themselves in a different way has been a real benefit of teaching outside and doing our STEM lessons outdoors. Increased family involvement. We all know family involvement is incredibly uh, important in the success of a student in our school and outdoor learning connects families and the community to the school. Outdoor classrooms provide natural entry points for families and community members to get involved with student learning. The relationships developed through outdoor learning have led to greater parental and community involvement and, and support for our school. My students, our grounds of our school are very accessible for their families after hours. And I'll take students outside and they'll tell me, you know, we came back, my family came back. We, I took my parents on the trails. I showed them the creek. I showed them our school uh, grounds and our parents are very involved and they, uh, they like to come up and explore as well. Uh, this is some of our water uh, <laughs> our students love to go in the tunnel. <laughs> so this is a very important spot for them and something that they love to show anyone that will come and visit. Uh, before you get started teaching outdoors, there are some important things that I suggest doing. And one of them is to research the land in which you'll be taking your students out upon. So before taking students outside, it's helpful to understand the history of the land you'll be using as your outdoor classroom. 
And a lot of the history is kind of surprising, especially for my school. The land that my school occupies was once part of the Chickasaw tribal lands and then became a segregated prison work farm before being taken over by our county. And my school was built in the early 1980s. My students often hypothesize on where they can best find artifacts from these times. The research adds to their understanding of the land and its history becomes tangible for them. So it really gives my students a sense of place to know that they are on land where others have been and finding things like the student found uh, part of a shovel from probably the old prison and finding things like that connects them to this land and to their community and to our community history and to the generations of people that came before them. Uh, we would probably love to get a metal detector one day to take it out and see what we can find, but we find bricks from the penitentiary. We have found arrowheads. We've uh, explored this land every which way and keep coming up with more things. It's really interesting. And that leads to a lot of discussions about what happened here before and why, and creates like a more well-rounded education for our students. Uh, here's a picture of the old shed. I'm not sure how long it's been there, but by the looks of it, quite a while. And what's left over agricultural fields from the work prison before. Learning outdoors helps develop a sense of place and civic attitudes and behavior. Pretty much what I was just saying before, but more evidence-based. Outdoor experiences help students increase their understanding of their natural and human communities, which leads to a sense of place. For a lot of our kids that are digital natives, that are more transient, that come and go in and out of our school districts, it's so important for them to understand where they are at the moment and the significance of that place and their place in this world. Um, through connecting to place, students develop stronger environmental attitudes and civic behaviors. So my students, we take part in community cleanup. Uh, we go through and we will clean the grounds, we'll remove trash, we'll um, help with the flower beds around our schools, and we want it to look its best. We also understand that civics plays um, a part in our lands. Recently, there was debate about our lands around our school being sold to back to the community. And my students did not like that idea. They opposed it, they wrote letters, and so far nothing's happened um, to sell our lands. So hopefully we'll keep all of it around our school. Outdoor learning experiences are the foundation of raising the next generation of active citizens who take care of their natural and human communities. I really believe that by taking them out, connecting them to the grounds, the earth, doing projects outside, they really become better citizens. And teaching outdoors is always place-based learning. I, I like to tell my students, you can learn anywhere and everywhere, just start looking around. <laughs> and this was during a seed lab when our students found um, their first cattails of the season. And some of them had never seen cattails up close before and did not believe me that they were seeds. They thought they looked like hot dogs on a stick. So we uh, had to explore and see what happened when we cut them down and took them apart. Luckily, when this picture was taken, I was standing downwind because we had seeds everywhere. So hopefully next year we'll have some more cattails in our field. Now, what does an outdoor classroom look like? Well, that's the big question, right? Having a designated area to teach and learn outdoors is great, but in my experience, it's not completely necessary. Benches, outdoor tables and chairs can help create a space, but your students can really learn anywhere. Um, I like to look for spaces that do have coverage from sun and elements when we go outside, just so um, my students can stay safe. <laughs> but learning can happen everywhere. I know during the pandemic, there was a big boom to buy uh, picnic tables for every school or outdoor classroom materials. But in my experience, it hasn't been completely necessary. This is one of my favorite ways to do an outdoor classroom, hay bales in a circle simple 
This picture was taken at the end of the season. And so it doesn't look as great as when we first set it up, but we were able to use it for most of the academic year. My students came out, we would sit on hay bales. We would have our lessons in the middle. And we even use the hay bales, bales at the end as planters to plant seeds and vegetables that will grow out of the hay bale. On our school lands, we have soccer, a soccer um, field and it has bleachers. So we commandeer those occasionally as our outdoor classroom. Here are some of my students out learning. My school has a courtyard, which one year during TCAP, when they stored the test in my classroom, I was um, stuck teaching in the courtyard for two weeks, which was wonderful in some ways and not great in others. There's very little coverage from the sun and elements and often wasps, but we made it work. Uh, but if you have a space like this, it's great to take advantage of. Uh, these tables have a textured top on them, which I would not recommend if you're looking to create a space that can work both for dining and for outdoor classes. You really need a smooth surface, not this uh, textured surface, but we make it work. Mapping. So one of my first activities that I do every year, sometimes twice a year, whenever I take a new group of students out, is that we map our land. And this helps them create a visual diary of our adventures, of our projects, of where we go. Um, so they take their paper, we create a compass rose, and they draw the landmarks around and name them. So um, you can also use technology, and I've done this before, where I'll have my students go out and photograph with iPads, um, various landmarks around our school. Um, so that we can create a, um, a digital map. Because uh, our land is always changing. One day, this um, these mounds of dirt, these giant mounds of dirt just appeared. And so we added those to our map. And of course, my students had to go and explore them and try to figure out why they were there and what use they had. And so it really became a great teachable moment. Teaching outside is really all about taking advantage of the teachable moments. So who to teach outside? Anyone, anyone can benefit from time outdoors. I've taught students as young as four and as old as 19 outside and everyone has enjoyed it. Um, dressing the part, um, a lot of teachers say that one of the barriers of going outside is that their students are not prepared. Um, especially if you have water on your property like I do. I found a really easy, cheap thing to invest in are these silicone shoe covers. You can see them on the student's shoe there, shoes there. They um, keep feet dry and they keep shoes from getting completely destroyed. If you teach in tidal or a high poverty area like I do, um, protecting our students' possessions, their clothing is very important. Um, you can also purchase or have someone donate a set of class rain boots. Um, I've had lots of people, um, my friends, donate old rain boots to my students. And I think every kid in the school's worn them at some point. And it's been wonderful. I also keep a closet in my classroom that has coats and jackets and rain ponchos and towels, basically anything that I can think of that we might need outside um, to protect ourselves and to dress the part yeah because weather varies like this is on an ice day and he needs gloves <laughs> i do keep some gloves but he didn't have them that day uh, setting expectations for students so this is huge and it's something that um I work on every year is making sure that my students know that we are going outside to learn. We are going outside to conduct experiments. We are going outside to engineer the grounds. We're going outside to do all of these things. It's not recess. And if you cannot follow our standards, you can't follow the directions, then you will not be going outside. So um, teachers often use this. They cite issues of um, supervision of students as a barrier to teaching outdoors. But if you keep your standards and expectations very clear from the beginning, then it becomes less of an issue. 
Um, it also helps keeping students actively engaged when they know the rules um, during their outdoor learning time. So my students learning the rules of how <laughs> to use a shovel and share. So what to teach outside. So I, my experience is with younger students primarily. So I put um, what K through five has in most of my lessons as far as STEM have more of a science or art leaning for the STEAM. Um, but these are some general things that you can teach to each grade level. Kindergarten really focuses on basic seasonal changes. We do weather walks with our younger students. Um, first grade does plant life cycles and on my school grounds we have a pumpkin patch every fall and so that's really wonderful for teaching plant life cycles second grade has animal life cycles including bugs which can be found in any outdoor environment whether you're in a rural setting like i am or suburban or even urban one of my uh, friends teaches in new york city and she takes her students outside um, her school happens to be pretty close to the High Line, which if you're not familiar with New York, it's an elevated uh, train track that's been turned into an outdoor park. And so she's been doing STEM and art outside and uh, did, just did a bug lab. Uh, third through fifth grade, they all study weather and there's a plethora of weather related um, lessons out there. Fourth through fifth study landforms. Um, our school land changes every year. It's really, it's amazing to me how much different it can look from year to year. And for my students to physically see that every year, to see the effects of erosion, to see the effects of wind, um, it really drives home those landform points. And all of our grades study ecosystems. So there's lots of things that they can see outside. Um, Here's my students. Uh, this was us working on a, um, a landform project where we have a creek system that goes through our district, our district grounds here, and it often floods. And so we were trying to engineer um, a bridge or to maybe remove water. And my students were really trying to figure out how we could stop the playground from flooding every time it rains. Seasonal projects. I love seasonal projects. Um, I create outdoor labs around the current season or current events. Um, that picture right there, um, that was the day of the solar eclipse back in 2017. And they're looking through the eclipse box. Um, in fall, we visit the pumpkin patch. In spring, we learn about weather and plant life cycles. We do outdoor um, kind of Christmas winter activities with snow and ice. Uh, here we are in early autumn walking through the pumpkin patch. You can see our pumpkins are not quite orange yet. But again, for my students to see that and see how the pumpkins change and develop over time, there's so much more seeing it in person than just reading about it in a book. Uh, we look at the study of flowers and plant life cycles. These are the daffodil bulbs that were planted around the warden's house of the old prison on our land. And so we dig these up um, every year and they kind of get to have these heirloom daffodils that they take home with them. Berries. So I've learned a lot about different types of plant life in Tennessee and what's used for. And as an art teacher, um, we do a whole project about finding things with pigment to create natural paint and mixtures. So water exploration. Now I love teaching water lessons. Some of my very first STEM trainings were with um, Project Wet out of Montana. Um, and if you don't know them, they're wonderful. So Google that. Uh, luckily my school has a creek on the property, as I've said before, but Every school has a system to deal with water on its grounds, either it's rain um, or even your indoor water. Uh, one of the things I like to do is take a water walk at any school that I teach at. I'll take the kids outside and we will walk around the building and we'll look for how the building deals 
with rainwater, how, if we have gutters, if we have uh, retaining pools next to parking lots and why those exist. And if there's a problem with our water, like flooding, having students try to come up with ways that we could remedy that. Um, teaching around water safety is incredibly important. I make sure that every year I'm up to date with my CPR and first aid. And um, I was a lifeguard in high school, so that helps. But we have a lot of really um, wonderful access to water here. This was during, um, after a snowstorm and we still had ice on the property and my students wanted to know why, if all the snow had melted, why there was still ice. So we went through um, a lab around that. Here they are on a peninsula in our creek, uh, again with the landforms. Uh, and some of them are wearing the shoe covers that you can see. Wildlife. Now, some people love outdoor wildlife, some people hate it. Um, I'm more of the love category and my students really enjoy finding traces of animals and bugs outside. But students love discovering wildlife or traces of wildlife on our school grounds. We always set very clear guidelines for handling of wildlife before embarking outdoors. I tell my students, if it has a mouth, it will bite you or can bite you. Do not pick it up. Uh, luckily, most of what we find has already uh, passed away and expired, um, like this little crawfish bit that he's holding there. So um, that helps. I've never come across anything that I felt was dangerous in over a decade of teaching outside. I haven't come across snakes or anything um, like that. Um, we check student health records before we go outside to make sure that they don't have any allergies that might require an EpiPen, like maybe they're allergic to wasps or um, fire ants, just to make sure. Uh, she was so excited. She found almost an entire intact crawfish body uh, and that it was blue <laughs> as opposed to the reddish color that they can be. Uh, trying to figure out what these holes were for was very... Uh, very interesting. And there's all kinds of tracks around our property. We have deer, raccoon. Um, we had a member of the Tennessee Wildlife come out and talk to my students about tracking animals and showed them pelts of all the animals that live in Tennessee. And um, my kids were pretty good at picking out which paw went with what animal. And I'd like to think that's because we've been looking at them outside all year. Um, you're not just limited to the land. You can take advantage of the sky. Uh, with STEM, I love drones and I love um, having drones come and visit my students. We haven't purchased one yet, but I feel like that's in our future. Um, one of my former students is a drone pilot and shoots um, photography for his mother's real estate business. And he was lucky enough, uh, we were lucky enough to have him come out and spend a week with my students, teaching them about the drones and letting them fly the drones around our school property. Um, also in the sky, we can have all kinds of weather labs from making barometers to testing the wind speed. Um, there's lots of things that you can do with weather in the sky. One of my favorite things ever is creating kites and coming up with different kite designs and seeing whose kite can fly the highest or the fastest. And students really love that. Mine get very competitive when it comes to their kites. Here's my student with his drone showing our kids on, looks like pajama day. <laughs> um. Whatever we do outside, I like to connect it back to the classroom so that we have a continuation of learning. Um, many of my lessons connect back. We often gather evidence outdoors and then bring it back in to test hypothesis or to do technology that we can't access in the field. Like we um, collect microinvertebrates from our creeks and then look at them under the microscopes to see what they look like and then match them with photos in um, books and document how many we have in each creek and determine if the water is good for life or not so great. Um, how to fund your STEM program. So 
funding is huge. We can't really do what we do without it. The first person I would talk to if this is something that you'd like to do would be your board of education. Often um, they have funding or they can point you in the right direction. Uh, there's federal and state programs. My after school program is with federal money. It's a federal grant and we've had it for since 2010 and it's been wonderful. We've been able to teach hundreds, maybe thousands of children that way. Um, I love writing grants. Grants are amazing. We're so fortunate in Tennessee to have the Tennessee Valley Authority and to have the Tennessee STEM Innovative Network, both of which offer grants for educators. Um, this is a grant that I won for $2,500 for a cart, um, basically an outdoor teach anywhere classroom with a projector and a laptop and um, a microscope that would connect to both. <laughs> it's great. Uh, local fundraising. If you go door to door or you can um, contact local businesses in your community to ask about fundraising, we've been successful contacting local banks. Um, most banks have a fundraising quota that they have to meet every year um, of where to donate money to. Also insurance companies, they will help uh, give funds to schools for specific projects. Uh, farmers gave us money to start seed, um, a seed project outside and um, planting in those hay bales. And a uh, classroom wish list. If all else fails, um, create a classroom wish list to share with your friends and family or on social media. Um, I've done very well with Amazon wish lists over the last couple of years. Um, and so this was a bunch of packages of student supplies that came in. But get outside. I hope that this presentation has inspired you to take students outside and to start learning outdoors. It's incredibly beneficial. I love doing it. Um, it's probably my favorite part of the day <laughs> and it has been for a very long time. If you have any questions or would like to follow up, you can contact me at kvon at tiptoncounty.com. My students waving goodbye. And these are our cited sources if anyone would like to have them. But thank you very much for coming today and listening and learning about teaching students outside. Thank you again.